against Postronir. And today let's talk about how to level and progress a witch in specifics for the 3.70 leak starter that I made for explosive arrow ballista. Now, the way I wanted to do this initially is just give you like a slideshow and tell you what to do at certain level points. But I thought actually leveling and giving you like a few like tidbits throughout my leveling process would maybe be better, right? I, I choose certain times and I actually show you where to buy the gems, where to get gems, how to do their vendor recipes live and not just like show you on a, on a PowerPoint presentation, right? Uh, so I need some, some training anyways in terms of leveling. It's always nice to have a little bit more runs in. So basically I just tell you where to get your gems, when to get your gems, uh, what what kind of gems you even use, right? Uh, vendor recipes that will make your life a lot easier throughout the acts. But I'm going to give a little bit of a disclaimer here right now. I'm not a racer. I don't really care about being like five minutes faster in act one, three minutes faster here, two minutes there. I care about having a good, comfy leak start and giving you that as well. So that I will try to do as well as possible for uh, basically everybody, whether you're a new player, whether you're a mid-tier player, um, this is basically going to be for you. So uh, let's start. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Tarkley here and he's going to give you Freezing Pulse. And the reason for that is we want to go Purifying Flame, but for level two and three, it's really, really nice to just have a freezing kind of skill, right? And you can still buy Purifying Flame here. Now from Nessa, you can buy uh, Purifying Flame at any time if you wish to. Um, so for example, you can buy it right now. It's, it only costs one school of wisdom. Uh, for now, you can cast both if you want to. One gives you consecrated ground and then you have consecrated ground and the other one freezes enemies, but, uh, you definitely want some of these. As for fireball, you can also do fireball, but it won't really help you with freezing. And, um, yeah, so you just put like, uh, you probably put, uh, freezing pulse with arcane search. So you also get that buff. Uh, for now, nothing else really needed. As always, check your vendor for movement speed boots. Uh, what you also want to look out for is babies basically picking up all the rares you find. You want to un-ID them and you want to sell them for alteration shards because at level 8 and going forward, you will need orb of alterations for a certain vendor recipe. We'll go to that later. But now, basically all you do is you progress to level 4. But yeah, and something to look out for it as well is uh, iron rings. If you find iron rings somewhere, uh, not because you want to wear them, but also for, uh, also for the recipe that we're about to do. So also pick up random iron rings you find. All right, so we now reached level four. And basically, if we look at the POB, this is the first setup here. This will basically be level 18, which is somewhere in Act 2, right? And during Act 1, what we want to do is basically fill up until Round about here, you're probably going to be level 13, to be honest. So this is going to be your tree in Act 1. Now, these you basically take at the very end after you took all the damage here. And what you can see already from this start is we have a lot of front-loaded damage, which will make it very, very easy for us to level. And we will need that because there's going to be a dry period where we don't get much. So it's good to have it up front. It will also make your life a lot easier, right? And once you're here, you also take heart and soul. These two points are just too good, especially since mana can be an issue at the start, especially once you get into auras and you have some mana reserved, right? And uh, then you go for uh, mental rapidity here, which you do like this and you take cruel preparations. So we're now level four and basically we just path like this. And now we're gonna go to Mr. Tartley over here. And as a reward, he will give us flame wall, which is very important. As well as that, he will give us frost blink, which is going to be our first movement skill that we won't be replacing until we get flame dash at level 10. So now we're basically done with freezing pulls. At this point, we don't really need anymore. Now we're going to go into fire damage and that's going to be purifying flame paired with arcane surge. Then we're going to do just straight up flame ball for now. And as the third, we need holy flame totem, which is right here. You can buy it for one scroll of wisdom from the vendor. This will be our third skill. Until we're level eight, we don't really have much to support this with. So just put in the holy flame totem there. Fireball, we don't need anymore. Freezing poles we're done with. And then frost blink wherever you want. Don't forget to get your quicksilver flask from the medicine chest quest. Uh, definitely get that. Other than that, not much to say. Once again, uh, look out for all both adorations. So you can vendor rare items, for example, and iron rings. Also, if you don't find any iron rings, you can always buy them here. But for now, you don't really need to. What you can definitely do is sometimes look at the coral rings in here. And uh, coral rings, it's just a lot of life for the start, right? For example, if we buy this one, that's like we shoot up from 93 to 139 life. That's crazy, right? That's almost like 50% more life at this point. So just one like that can do that. Uh, so if you find like blacksmith whetstones or armor scraps, convert them into scroll of wisdoms and buy yourself some rings and stuff. So what this is now going to look like is you have your purifying flame, which is going to be your kind of main skill. 
and then sometimes you put down a totem right for example if there's a rare you can also just put down a totem move put down a totem move right as well as that you have flame wall and as soon as holy flame totem goes through this flame wall shoots through the flame wall it gets added damage uh from how flame wall works where was it again uh there it was yeah so uh modifiers to spell damage blah 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 so whenever you scale spell damage you also scale the damage over time of enemies standing in there projectiles which pass through the wall deal added fire damage huge for holy flame totem doesn't do anything for a purifying flame so just make sure you have like the flame wall here and then your totem behind it if the enemy's over there also what you will want to look out for are items with either fl free blue sockets or two blue and one rex sockets and that's basically because holy flame totem is red all your supports will be blue right so um for the blue skills purifying flame and um flame wall you will just want like triple blue right uh, but for your holy flame totem you need that one red for the holy flame totem all the supports that we're going to use for now will be blue all right so we're now at level eight and there is a lot to do we're currently in the prison let's go back real quickly so um now is where you get your combustion support gems which is going to give you a lot of increased damage or like more multiplier for your gems as well as that if you have one or two orb of alterations at this point you now get to make ones that are extremely strong but before anything let's go to miss nessa over there and as you can see here you have the combustion support you also have added lightning damage support which is not going to be bad either you just take combustion and then uh you basically want to buy a second combustion now um just to be uh, sure you know uh combustion actually does not work with flame wall right uh, so don't support it to flame wall only support these two to both um purifying flame and your holy flame totem as well as that we will get the added lightning damage and this is basically just for the holy flame totem because we don't really have anything that's better at this point infused channeling does not work with totems anymore so if you have problem problem getting three links this happens a lot right you literally just get three links and you can buy them for one scroll of wisdom and what we want to do here is purifying flame supported with arcane surge and then one of the combustions right and we also want to do a uh, holy flame totem which we're going to put in here together with combustion and added lightning damage now if you have the sockets for it you can also buy a support gem for your flame wall and this that will be efficacy support this will also give it a little bit more duration so it will feel better you won't have to recast it as much uh do we have the yeah we do have the gems if we remove this so we just go um, with efficacy plus flame wall in here but here's the interesting part your wands can be made a lot better now and this will basically double your damage just to check in before uh before anything let's just take our holy flame totem as a reference point we have a dps of 57.5 so now i hope you have two iron rings if you don't you can probably buy one from nessa and if you found a ruby ring that's even better but basically you take two red gems you can buy these from nessa right you just go over here and just buy however many you need you only need two in this case if you have a ruby ring you don't need to do this first recipe at all but basically you vendor two iron rings with two red gems any red gems and you get two white ruby rings now after this we have two magic wands we have two alter orb of alterations and we have two ruby rings now if you only have one orb of alteration at this point don't stress just do one for now and as soon as you hit the second one do the second recipe but basically you go here and we sell it boom 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 and now you can see here you get two of these wands with added fire damage to spells and just so you can understand how huge these are let's just put them on real quickly we said we had 57.5 dps now we look at it here with 127.5 so we more than doubled our damage and that's what i'm saying that's what i'm here for in the leveling guide if you've never done this before um this will make your life a lot easier so now we beefed up our setups right holy flame totem uh we have our flame wall right here right with efficacy let's put it up here and we have our purifying flame which we have with combustion and arcane surge let's put it on our right click so now you should be prepared for brutus this is a very simple and easy setup uh also something you can do here is you can actually look if they have a heavy is she has a heavy belt at this point she doesn't have a heavy belt uh once again you can buy another core ring to get yourself a little better if you have a sapphire ring as well um, that will be a huge boon also don't forget to get your flame dash at level 10 after you killed brutus something i also forgot to mention is that you will probably need strength for holy flame totem so you just buy a ember amulet here nothing crazy for your holy flame totem also something to keep out uh, uh an eye out for is random essences it doesn't matter what tier because um you will later need them to upgrade two of your rings once we're going to upgrade these ones i will tell you all about it. you can actually upgrade these later but uh just try to get at least two of any essence but other than that you're basically set with this setup until level 16 when we're going to meet again and then your passive tree should look a little bit 
like this, right? Actually, it should probably look like this, right? You take mental rapidity first, and then you take cruel preparations. So um, this is how it should look like. And uh, yeah, see you in a second. Once you're level 16, I actually forgot to uh, put in the all flame and get my extra passive point. But once you're level 16, you will get both Herald of Ash and Herald of Purity. And that's basically by doing the um, side, uh, side quest that you have to hand in the Baleful Gem. And you go to Groost and he gives you one of them. And then you simply go to Hina and take the other one. As you can see here, these are both of the Red Heralds. Herald of Purity and Herald of Ash. And these will basically just give you a ton of damage. Now, other than that, there's not much to say. At level 18, we'll get more. Currently, I'm one over leveled, but I just wanted to quickly point that out because these are level 16, right? So now we finished the Mental Rapidity. And um, yeah, next up, we're going to go for Cruel Preparations. And then we're going to go for Ellie Overload. From then on out, we're just going to path over to the left side. We're not going to take Ancestral Bond yet, but we're kind of going to prepare for what, what's to come after we do our first Ascendancy and get Elementalist so we can respec into element, uh, Explosive Arrow Ballista. All right, so we just killed the Weaver, and now we have the Maligaro Spike, and we go to Silk, and now we get some good um, support gems, and what we're going to pick here is Elemental Focus. So now it's sort of time to upgrade your build. Now, first up, what we're going to do with the Ellie Focus is we're going to support Flame Wall. So how it's going to look like is Flame Wall, Elemental Focus, and Efficacy, but it doesn't really stop there. We're also going to get... Uh, more elemental focus and that's one more right so the only thing you have to look out for that elemental focus is not on the same setup as the one skill you want to apply combustion with and the skill we want to apply combustion with is most likely just holy flame totem right so what we're going to do is we're going to put elemental focus instead of combustion on the purifying flame right so we have purifying flame arcane surge elemental focus but that's not it our holy flame totem also has a pretty shitty support which is added lightning damage which we're going to reconcile now and by taking faster casting support right these all take alterations so as you might have guessed if you don't have the alterations just do that later um but yeah this is the most important part now you have three three links as your main damage setup now in the meantime we found two ruby rings and we found two essences which we're going to need in a second when we're going to upgrade our ones but more to that on level 20. important as well is that we're killing all bandits we're damaged over time we don't really get much from Alira, and everything else doesn't really give us anything so just kill them all for two passive points all right so we just got to level 20 we killed all the bandits we got our passive points um, the rest we're going to spec into 1-2, Elemental Overload, and then we're going to go here. We're probably going to need Strength, but I don't want to fill it in yet. We're just going to go up and then onto this side. And the reason I stopped at level 20 for a bit is to tell you that you can now upgrade your ones. And you're going to do that with the same recipe, but a little bit different. So first up, what you have to do is once again, make your ones blue. And I would say maybe look out for Quartz ones, because at this point, Goat's Horn, the implicit will be a little bit worse, right? So you will lose on the percentage spell damage, which is actually pretty huge at this stage. So get as good implicit spell damage as you can. Then you just put this on, right? Random mods, doesn't matter. And now this time, the Ruby Rings have to be rare for the recipe. And like I said, you should have found like four to five different essences now. Just take two of those and make them rare. It doesn't matter what you roll. And now you go to a vendor and you sell that with two alterations, actually. Let's do this. Uh, sell it with two alterations so two magic ones two ruby rings both have to be rare the ones have to be uh magic and then you put down two over alterations and as you can see now this fire damage is considerably higher so just to show you real quickly what this upgrade does and why this is so important 484 dps right and let's put in the two new ones and we put that in here purifying flame elemental focus arcane search up to 809 so once again not as crazy as the first upgrade, but this is almost double damage. So these two recipes are definitely worth it 
do your want recipes, they're going to carry your ass. All right, so we're now level 24, are we? We're level 23, so we can't equip it just yet. But basically, we're going to get the sewer keys. And right after, you can go over to Maramoa for a reward. And you basically want to take flammability, which I think is 24, right? So we can't really use it right now, but in a second. And then you also want purity of elements. You can also take it the other way around. It doesn't really matter. And purity of elements is just extremely good while leveling. You cannot be frozen. You cannot be chilled. It's just... Fantastic, you cannot be randomly ignited, right? Uh, you also kept your resistances way easier. And uh, this is basically the reason we want to take these uh, aura nodes next. And we also want to take the mastery with mana reservation efficiency. Um, so that's why we can the path here early, right? And after we have this, we can have uh, double herald and pure developments. Also, just as a reminder, at this point, uh, four links are going to start dropping. You're looking for um, a four blue or uh, one red and free, free blue, basically. So look out for that. If you get one, nice. If you don't, doesn't matter. Uh, also, always check the vendors. So one of the most important things if you want to respec, especially if you want to go explosive arrow early, is that you get Siosa, his four golden pages, and you do the fixture of fate quest. After you did it, he basically rewards you with something. I don't even know if he has anything we need. Doesn't really matter. But what I want to show you is, most of you already know this, but he basically sells you all the gems that you could buy in any class. This means that stuff like Explosive Arrow, which you really shouldn't get as a witch, you can still buy right here. And uh, basically, I'm going to give you a shopping list and you want to buy these as soon as possible and possibly want to level them already in your offhand. So gems that you need are Explosive Arrow, Elemental Damage Attacks, Foster Attacks, Determination, Grace, Defiance Banner, Wrath, and Lightning Spire Trap. Now, if you can buy all of these, you want to level a few in your offhand. You can only, only level six in your offhand, right? Uh, but that's good enough. If you have some open sockets, just throw them in there. Um, for the next few levels, until you do your first lab, um, at which point you will respec, this will carry you anyways. You don't have to think about this anymore. Also, the most important gem, which is Ballista Support, because this one you want to level as fast as possible. It only costs an orb of transmutation. This one definitely has to be leveled just as explosive arrow because it is very low level and it will determine how much HP your explosive arrow ballista will have. So level that up quickly before you get into a level 30 zone and all your ballistas get one shot. Now, after you completed your shopping spree here, you're missing one more ingredient before we can kind of set up the seeds for the next few levels when you're uh, gonna uh, respec after lab and that is by a precision now precision the reason you buy it here instead of on the library is that it's here already leveled so here it is already level six which is going to be very very important for the accuracy that we get and this is going to ensure that your fuses will actually hit even though you're in the upper region of the element list where there's no accuracy inside, basically. And there's nothing much more to say, right? In your offhand, if you have the right colors, you can level, um, which is very going to be very important. The Grace Determination and the Defiance Banner, we're not going to need until maps, but it's still nice to have. Once you have the socket colors, just throw them in somewhere to level it. But until we're now going to be completed with Lab, you don't really have to do anything else. So uh, let's get that.
All right, so we're now level 32. We just completed our first um, Izaro, right? So we can now choose our Ascendancy and we're going to go for a Elementalist. Now here's where you have to make the decision. Do you want to go Armageddon brand, Cremation, right? That's I'm sure there's a lot of leveling guides about that. If you don't feel comfy with explosive error, if you made some kind of mistakes, I'm going to make a checklist so you don't. But if you at some point feel like it's bad, you can also respec. But uh, yeah, we're going to go into Shaper of Flames. And now I'm going to show you how to respec into explosive arrow at this level. Now, in order to level the build, you'll need a few things. Number one, you need enough dexterity to actually put on all those dex gems, right? So you probably will have to get agility. You probably will have to get any kind of jade amulet, right? They're pretty easy to get. You can also get rare ones from um, completing quests, right? Other than that, you won't really get any decks yet. And you basically want to have enough decks to where if you path down here, until you start getting into the dexterity area, you're fine on decks. You can also craft it anywhere with the crafting bench, right? But that's important. Now you need three things. Number one, you need a bow with at least 1.5 base attack speed. Now, obviously, what you can do if you wanna, you can throw on like an orb of transmutation, right? That won't be too hard. That doesn't do anything. That does a little bit, right? So we get a little bit of accuracy on top, but yeah, just do whatever. Then you unequip your stuff, right? Uh, what you also want is a two-point arrow quiver. These are both low level, so these can be bought mostly from Act 1 vendors. Uh, just check here or there, right? If you can get them, maybe Act 2 vendors, but they're very low level, most likely Act 1, right? So now you put both on. This is really important for accuracy. Now, if you have the currency, right, you can also do this. Yeah, we got something decent at least. So uh, on top of that, what you need is a four link, and that's pretty important for your explosive arrow. At this point, it shouldn't be too hard to get a four link. You will want two greens, two reds. Now, don't try too much chroming around, right? Unless the base is armor evasion, then it should be very, very easy. So we put that on, and now we have our explosive arrow set up in here, which is going to be explosive arrow plus ballista totem plus uh, faster attacks here. Uh, plus elemental damage with attacks. Also from the future here, a gem I forgot that you should be buying uh, is Frenzy. This will be basically generating Frenzy charges for you. Now, to make the Frenzy feel a little bit, bit better, you will also support it with faster attacks here. And other than that, all that's left is basically get a few blue sockets somewhere, right? I'm pretty sure you're going to have it open from before. And uh, what you want to do is you want to support Lightning Spire Trap with Combustion. And the reason you want to proc uh, combustion with lightning spray trap is that you will do no damage because at this point you're just going to refund whatever you want right it could be anything you could also be cleverer than me and actually um, keep a passive point here and take ancestral bond right so at this point we're not going to do any damage but our traps still can so in order to combust we will have to uh, use lightning spray trap other than that we also have flame dash you can put that wherever and you have uh, flammability. Now, as for auras, you want to put on precision and you want to put on either purity of elements or wrath. I usually go for wrath because at the start, you'll probably want the damage. You can switch this out whenever if you feel comfy, right? Um, the thing about this setup here, so right now we're kind of ready, right? Uh, but the thing about the setup is that um, before you get these two damage over time clusters, so next up we want holy fire and the 20% fire damage over time multiplier, right? And after that, we will want the Acrimony with the increased skill effect duration. And now let's quickly try it out, right? Let's put in our keybinds and uh, let's quickly go for a run in Aqueduct and show you how this feels at level 32. So with all of these things that we did, right? You have your Ascendancy, you have everything set up. Like I said, uh, you will be completely fine. And I'll show you how it looks like. So basically just put down totems, they attack, everything dies. So let's see this. The fuse goes off, it's dead, right? Um, at this point, you will still have a lot of damage from your actual hit, right? But you can basically move and everything behind you is going to die, as you can see here. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people have been saying in the comments that they can't level with this for some reason. Um, I hope this could kind of enlighten you, especially this part could be hard for some people. Uh, definitely go for faster attack support at the start, because otherwise your ballistas are going to be so slow before you get down. Now, if you feel like this is not good enough for you, you can also go for cremation armor brand. I really like having my skill as soon as possible. I think this is perfectly fine. If we go back here, we will see everything died behind here. Yeah, so just move, place, move, place, right? It's super nice. Uh, also for this playstyle, which is really going to be nice, is the totem mastery that taunts nearby enemies. It's just going to basically make you kind of immune, and then you can frenzy a little bit, and then your attack speed goes up as well. Make sure that you place your ballistas. So right now, the ballistas are still a little bit squishy because your ballista support is low level. But yeah, I'm going to show you the single target real quick in a sec. And basically, you throw down 
um, your Lightning Spire Trap, and then this is going to combust, and this is how much damage you deal. Let's see when he comes down. Yeah, so once it explodes, it's basically dead. So yeah, if your build looks anything like this, you made it, right? You're going to double your damage in the next eight passive points, right? So the damage is not going to fall off anytime soon. And once you have that damage spike, we're going to go further down. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But uh, right now, this is basically where this kind of ends. Uh, we will still have one thing, or I think, I guess, two more things to do at level 38. But until then, uh, enjoy your ballistas. All right, so now we're basically right in front of Malakai. And we just got this quest done. We're level 38, so now we can buy ourselves a Ignite Prolif. I don't remember if this costs an Orb of Alchemy. If you actually did not drop a single Orb of Alchemy, I guess that would be a, a problem. Uh, let's see if it does. Yeah, it costs an Orb of Alchemy, so if you can't afford that, um, so be it, right? But basically, at this point, you want to have a uh, socket set up where you can replace Elemental Damage with Attacks with Ignite Proliferation. This will need two green, a red, and a blue. Once you have that, Ignite Proliferation will completely revamp your build. Now you have way more efficient Ignites, right? Because the biggest Ignite always prolifs. And on top of that, your clear will go through the roof. As well as that, if you have the links for it, you can now also buy Hextouch. But it also costs an Orb of Alchemy, so be careful. And now you could automate, basically, you could do Frenzy, supported with Hextouch supported with where was it like flammability was it here yeah supported with flammability so these three together would basically mean that you now don't have to frenzy and cast your flammability but you only have to frenzy and they get automatically the the curse gets automatically applied as for the passive tree as i said we basically filled out these clusters now it feels a lot better also be sure that you give explosive air a little bit time in the oven because it gets a lot better with levels right so at the start it might feel a little bit scuffed but it's going to be good in a sec uh, next up we would take the skill effect duration and everything now i will just explain i will not level to fucking level 80 or something uh, the rest i will explain in detail so this will be the tree that we currently have and as you can see we have a lot of dead weight here and basically what you want to do is you want to make it so you can use some of your regret orbs to get back some of your passive points because surprise surprise you don't really care about cast speed and stuff like that so what you can do here is you go down and then you connect here right and now what you can do is with your regret points if you haven't farmed any regret points you can do this later right but there is always a quest in each act which will give you two regret points so at this point, you're in Act 4, so you should have 8 Regret Points if you don't look up the quest that you have to do, and then you can respec some of these points. So now we'll respec out of all of this, basically, right? Uh, this is what we can do for now, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this one you don't really have to respec because it's, it's not that bad of a point. And uh, now you could also respect this one. For now, it doesn't really matter. But if you have the point, this would be your eighth point. And now we have this cluster here, which we're going to respect later. Um, first, you want to respect this. But at this point, you won't have the points. Uh, these are okay-ish on their own. So you don't really need to, right? Uh, now we have some points, right? So we go down here. And the first thing you do is you take Ash, Frost, and Storm. And most likely, you're going to take the 15 to all rest. This is going to make your gearing way better. Now you go down. There's a little bit of mana region, which is nice. And you path through Constitution, right? Uh, then you're here. And then you do Totemic Seal, uh, which I don't think at this point you really need a mastery. I guess you can do Totem Placement range if you want to. Um, now you go on, right? And here, I wouldn't really take anything for now. You don't need Mage Bane. Profane chem Chemistry is for a little later. And once you're here, uh, now here's the juicy part. At this point, you're level 54 and you can do your second lap. So if you do that, you will... So this was the first lap. If you do that, you will get Mastermind of Discord. So now you really run, want ec Elemental Equilibrium. And now is the time to check all your gear that you do not have any fire damage. Also hover over your skill. See that you do not have any fire damage whatsoever. And then you're good to go. You just... You need a little bit of cold or a little bit of lightning and it is activated. If you don't know exactly, you can also watch my main build guide. I talked about it in detail there as well. And once you take that, so the thing is, right, the new avatar of the hunt is going to be reworked. There's going to be a chance to gain facing nodes here. So you're basically going to go through here to the avatar of the hunt. You Like, don't take these, take the chance to gain facing. Facing is going to be insane. And the thing about facing on kill is, on kill effects on totems do work, because the ignite belongs to you and not the totem. So you get the kill credit if the enemy was killed by a dot. So this will be added later. But once you have these phasing on kill nodes, you go here. You definitely want Art of the Gladiator. Attack speed, accuracy, absolutely huge, right? You go down, you take Deadly Draw, also huge. 
You can also take heavy draw if you really need the damage, but I think for now you're fine. Um, then you go for here, Golem's Blood is going to make things a little bit easier with HP. And then finally, you have the good points, Panopticon. And I would also take Ironwoods just so your Ballistas don't die, but you can delay this. Let's say we delay this, right? And at this point, when you finish this, you're basically finished with the Acts, right? So you're level 68. This will be how your Act progression will look like. And after the Act progression, when you're in maps, you basically want to go to Watchtowers here because you will not have the currency to anoint this because it's double Silver Oil, right? And it is very important. So what you do is you go... You could go through uh, uh, one with nature, but I would probably go for quick step here and go through there. And you can take Heart of Oak if you want, but what I usually do is I just go straight here and rush Watchtowers. And now everything that's basically left is just filling out now. So that would be Mage Bane, like Reflexes, all the life you haven't taken, right? Um, other than that, uh, you can always uh, respec all of these nodes, right? If you finish the campaign, you should have enough points to respect all of those. If you don't, look at what quests give you regret points. So next up, I want to talk about some leveling uniques that could make your life a lot easier. Maybe you find a chaos, right? And you're thinking about what to buy. These are your go-to. Number one, and this is your biggest one, Stormcloud. This is such a huge upgrade to any rare bow you could have. It has such high attack speed. It feels phenomenal. It also has flat lightning, which does contribute to your uh, fire damage because you have... Um, you have the uh, Shaper of Flames Ascendancy, right? Uh, so Stormcloud, if you find a Chaos and they cost like a Chaos, definitely take them. Uh, I have a feeling that they might be a little bit more expensive because there's a lot of Ballista players out there this time. Now next up, High Respite. And you can actually get this Quiver with a Vendor Recipe. Whenever you find your first Gem Cutter's Prism, just apply it to a Rain of Arrows. So it has one quality, right? And then what you do is you go to a Vendor and you go Shark Tooth Arrow Quiver plus a Rain of Arrows with one quality plus a Rare Onyx Amulet and a Orb of Chance and there is going to be your High Respite. Next up, a step above is Skirmish. Now, a lot of people are running Ballista builds. This, usually these cost like a Chaos at League Start. These might be like five, maybe even 10 Chaos. They're very, very common. So it depends on how many Uniques are actually going to get spit out, right? Out of the new League mechanic. Uh, this might actually be something you just find straight up, right? But this Quiver is just perfect, right? It has increased global accuracy and it gives you plus one totem. So if you can somehow get your hands on this, this one is stupidly good for leveling. Then we have Lionized Glare. And from level 66 onwards, this is actually a very strong bow, right? This is a very good combo with Tabula because right now you don't have a Chaos, right? So you just go Tabby plus Lionized. The thing is, these are sometimes like 10 Chaos plus at League Start. So uh, they're also it's also really hard to get the decks. So if you can somehow get a, 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 a um, setup like this going, it's going to be very strong because you don't need any evasion. Uh, hits cannot be evaded. The Fire Shot doesn't do anything, but it's a very decent bow and it also has high attack speed. Also, something I forgot to mention is Onder's Clasp. This is actually a level 5 requirement and you have 30% increased attack speed while on full life. Now, don't run Blood Rage with this. You're not going to have the region to be on full life after this. But this one would be insane, right? Absolutely insane. Once you have your Ballistas going, if you're at full life, 30% attack speed, that's as good as your Fosher attack support, basically, right? But this, yeah, it's even better, right? Um, so straight up, a uh, huge upgrade. If you These are dropped very, very often. So uh, if you have them, use them once you respec into Explosive Arrow. And at the end, everybody should get a Tabula Raza. It gives you too much damage not to. Just get it. Get your six link going. Uh, try to fix your mana with like a mana flask because obviously the mana cost will shoot up uh, significantly. But Tabula Raza is always an absolute no-brainer. But yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to say about this leveling process. I know the start is always the hardest. Once you get Explosive Arrow going, it actually feels very, very nice. So yeah, if you forgot something, right? Maybe it's like the day of leak start and you don't know where to go when respecking. Maybe rewatch it, right? There's timestamps. Uh, but I wish you a very good leak start and I hope this video could help you out. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do stuff like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. But yeah, it was fun. This is a little bit of nice practice for me as well, right? Um, I'm definitely going to start like this. Once again, if you don't feel comfy uh, playing this, it's not as good as Armageddon Brand Cremation, but I personally don't like respecking like in maps. Then I went through the whole campaign and I have no idea how Explosive Arrow feels. So maybe that's just me. Um, also, Crouching Tuna, I'm sure has a Cremation plus Armageddon Brand guide out there if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, uh, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.